Good morning everyone and welcome to Remembrance Day Assembly 2020. Today I'd like to talk to you about historians. I know that seems a bit of a strange and slightly boring topic to do a whole school assembly on, but trust me, historians are interesting. And I'd like to talk about historians and World War I. I'd like to look at the start of this assembly about how historians view the start of World War I, specifically how different countries played their role in the events that led up to the war. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to look a little bit at some historian quotations about the start of World War I. So, starting off, we can look at a historian writing in the 1960s, a man by the name of Fritz Fischer. He leaves us in no doubt as to who he thinks is responsible for the start of World War I. His claim that Germans' foreign policy aims were focused on conquering land leaves us in no doubt that Fritz Fischer places the blame squarely on Germany. However, there are other opinions that historians have too. LFC Turner, writing in the 1970s, places the blame on a variety of different countries. Austria, Serbia, France and Russia all play their role, according to Turner, in the start of World War I. And this confusion continues. When we look at Hans Ulrich Wehler, Hans Ulrich Wehler places the blame very much on both Germany and on Britain, claiming that their naval rivalry was responsible for starting World War I. And James Joll is clear when he says that all the major powers were involved in starting World War I. So, clearly different historians have different viewpoints as to the causes of World War I. They've all had access to the same books, they've all had access to the same information, and yet they've come up with such different viewpoints as to who is responsible for the start of World War I. But, if we were to go back a hundred years, there was no doubt in the minds of the soldiers fighting who was responsible. The British government made it certain to the British people that Germany was responsible for starting the war. And equally, German government made the same thing clear to their people that Britain was responsible for starting the war. There was no grey area for those soldiers. The British soldiers and the British people were fed a consistent diet of propaganda that demonstrated very clearly to them that they were on the side of right and that Germany was on the side of wrong. This propaganda either exaggerated or made up stories about how awful the Germans were and the British people, knowing that they were fighting, were only too willing to believe this. However, it, over in Germany, it's a different story. The German government made it known that the British alliance with Russia and with France had encircled them, had threatened them, had intimidated them. Germany was fighting this war to defend itself, not to attack anyone. And the German government ensured that their propaganda made it clear who was really responsible. And that was Great Britain. This German propaganda looked really similar to the British propaganda. The only difference was that this propaganda made it clear that Britain was responsible for starting the war and that Britain were the ones who were committing acts of awful atrocities against their enemies. So, what can we learn about studying these sources and looking at these historians? Just this. Each side during World War I felt justified in their actions. They were convinced that they were the good guys. And if you believe in your heart that you are the good guy and the opponent is the bad guy, then that justifies your use of weaponry. It justified their use of barbed wire, of gas, of machine guns, of tanks. It justifies being horrible to your opponents when you truly believe that you are right. And the reality is that many of these exaggerated or made up stories feel all too familiar today. 
I've been thinking a lot recently about perspective, about how people are naturally drawn towards interpretations of events that make them feel comfortable and make them feel like they're right and make them feel like their opponents must therefore be wrong. We live in a world where this is becoming all too familiar. I'm sure many of you are like me. You've watched on television as a society divided into different camps, both sides thinking they're right. Fracking, elections, Brexit and countless other issues are populated by people that know that they are right and therefore their opponent is wrong. This righteousness, therefore, justifies all manner of undignified and unacceptable behaviour. Because, as we have seen, when you know you're right, poor behaviour is justified. I get it. There is a comfort in allowing yourself to believe that you are in the right, that you are the good guy. There is a comfort in surrounding yourself with people that tell you that you are right. There is a comfort in reading and watching stuff that simply echoes back to you what you already believe. But to what extent do we allow this feeling to then justify our words and actions towards others? You're the good guy, then being horrible to the bad guy is justifiable. I'm wondering how many of you have fallen out with a friend or another student. How long did it go on for? Would you both give identical accounts of what had caused this argument? Or would your accounts bend and change depending on who was saying it to make yourself sound better? Did you ever try and look at the argument from the other person's perspective? When I look back at World War I, I want to ask, was it worth it? Were the millions dead, the tens of millions injured, homeless, left in mourning for family and friends? Did they think it was worth it at the end of the day? We do not benefit from conflict, either as individuals or as nations. If you take nothing else from this assembly, take this. Look at the world through someone else's eyes. You don't have to agree with them, but see if you can understand things from their perspective. If Remembrance Day can show us anything, it can show us that sometimes being certain that you're right is not worth the eventual cost. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.